Good morning, everyone. It is once again Ted the Speed Learner, and I am here this morning, this very morning, to review Josh Kirby, Time Warrior, Planet of the Dino Knights. Okay, so if you have this particular video, if you have it on Amazon, if you've ordered on DVD, which either way would be great, whatever you've done, pop it into your DVD player or turn on Amazon, either way, and I'm now going to tell you all the things that I saw in this movie, and these are interesting questions that you should be asking in your head. This is stuff you should have spotted when you watched the movie. You can follow along. Let's go with this. Okay. What does Josh Kirby consider to be an average ninth grader? As you know, they have these introductions to every one of these Josh Kirby movies. Well, we have to wonder, what does Josh Kirby consider to be an average ninth grader? Why was he struggling to get good grades? Why isn't Josh wearing a helmet when he's riding his bicycle? Why is there a train in the space-time continuum? Okay. Why couldn't Irwin 1138 stop Dr. Zoetrope? Okay. How is Josh sure that Irwin and Zoetrope will land in the year 1995? This is according to the intro. Okay. Josh forgets to tell everyone why he's going for the ride of a lifetime. Okay. And why does Josh believe anything that Irwin says? How does Josh know Azabeth is a warrior when he first meets her? And I know that we eventually we find out that Irwin is carrying a power staff, but he really doesn't need to use it as a walking stick. Obviously, he is perfectly capable of walking wherever, wherever he needs to go. So, alright. And, where is this cave? They're in a cave uh, at the beginning of the movie. Where is this cave? They never tell us. And you see all the people there, except Irwin himself, wearing radiation suits. Is the nullifier radioactive? If so, they should be anywhere near it. Okay. Now, look at the way they're carrying the nullifier components. Is it fragile? Obviously, he says that the nullifier, later on, later on he says that the nullifier is indestructible and he has uh, disassembled it. Somehow he managed to get it into six components. Well, if it's indestructible, how did he get into six components? And once he made it into six components, what, are they fragile or something? Really? Okay. And, he, and Irwin always says, prepare for the storm. What storm? Okay. Oh, and how did Dr. Zoetrope find Irwin? What, or was he actually looking for the first nullifier component? Maybe that's how he found him. I don't know. And why do the null of... Oh, wait a minute. Oh, 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 oh. I need to back that up for a second. Okay. Irwin's in the cave with all these nullifier components. How did Dr. Zoetrope find Irwin? I think there's a partial explanation in Last Battle for the Universe, but we'll get into that later. Okay. Why do the nullifier components glow when they are transported through time? And if these components are radioactive, why is it Irwin wearing a radiation suit? Okay, and why didn't Irwin order the guard to seal the door before he started shipping out these nullifier components? Okay. <laughs> and some kind of a seal that was... It didn't take very long for Dr. Zoetrope to uh, completely destroy it. And Irwin didn't know the Zoetrope was coming, please. Okay, they didn't explain that one either. And Dr. Zoetrope 
must have seen that final nullifier component before it got loaded onto that platform and sent off through time. Why didn't Dr. Zoetrope just disable the machine so the final one couldn't leave? And I like this. Was it the machine encrypted? Think about that for a second. I mean, the, 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 the coordinates that these nullifier pieces were sent to should have been encrypted. That way, Dr. Zoetrope would have to decrypt the machine before he could ever find out where they were. Now, I know that Dr. Zoetrope is supposed to be very, very smart. But it would take him quite some time to decrypt the uh, machine if it had been encrypted. And here's the thing. Even though Irwin was disabled at that point because of what Dr. Zoetrope did to him, well, okay, didn't Dr. Zoetrope somehow um, put Irwin in a cell somewhere to make sure he couldn't chase Zoetrope, he couldn't chase, um, that Irwin couldn't chase Zoetrope? Think about that. Okay, obviously, Dr. Zoetrope's time ar armor, okay, th this would be the time armor that Zoetrope's wearing, okay, it was protecting him from the guard's weapon, okay? So why did Zoetrope even bother attacking the guard? He could have just walked right past. And only one guard? Please! Now, Josh obviously has broken watches, and we find out later why. But the thing is, why did he keep them? Was he planning to repair them someday? If his watches keep breaking, why does he even bother wearing a watch in the first place? Maybe he could have studied and found a pattern to why his watches were breaking and making sure that he didn't have the watch on when it broke. Okay, and no neighbor or friend of Josh's dad ever told Josh's dad that, hey, Josh is riding, he's racing his bicycle. Nobody ever told him that? Really? Now, Josh successfully avoids the lady shopper. But he also is successfully able to avoid the car door that suddenly opens up. Really? And there are no kids on the playground equipment. You're telling me all of them are in school? What, there are no preschool kids on the, on the playground equipment? What's the deal there? Oh, and Josh's friend has his back? Really? Now get this. Josh's friend is also named Irwin. Coincidence? Hmm. Now, when Dr. Zoetrope arrives, why doesn't he hide his suit? I mean, think about it. He could have hid his suit, walked around, found whatever he needed, and then put his suit back on and taken off. Why didn't he just hide his suit? Okay. So, when Josh calls Irwin, his friend, okay... He doesn't immediately tell Irwin that he has this nullifier component and that it could be radioactive? Really? Okay. So, Josh's friend is a physicist. And and uh, Irwin, okay, that's Josh's friend, Irwin... His dad's a physicist, but Irwin is attending a regular school. Really? That kid should be in a private school. Okay. Now, Josh and his friend Irwin mistook the ringing of a telephone as some disastrous warning? Really? What did, I, what did they think it was? Some tornado siren? Okay. And Dr. Zoetrope actually goes over and rings the doorbell. Right. 
all that equipment, he could have opened that door very easily, but he goes and rings the doorbell. That's really? And Josh's dad, when he sees Zoetrope's suit, just automatically assumes that some guy from the plant and there's some kind of a joke. Really? And think about it. Josh's dog was present when Josh and Irwin had their conversation at Irwin's house and somehow ran all the way from Irwin's house to Josh's house before Dr. Zoetrope arrived? <laughs> I don't believe that. And why did Dr. Zoetrope even bother to destroy Josh's bike? That not make any sense. And why wasn't Irwin wearing a suit of armor? He knew Zoetrope had one. Why did he build one for himself? And how did Josh know which button to push? Oh, and why did Irwin ram Dr. Zoetrope in the time pod? Okay, and as I said before, if the nullifier is indestructible, how did uh, Irwin divide the nullifier into six components? I'd like to know that. And why didn't Irwin take anyone with him? He had plenty of guards, scientists. He could have taken anybody with him in the time pod. Okay, if the damage that the time pod sustains is outside the time pod, how did Irwin fix it on the inside of the time pod? That doesn't make any sense. And how did Irwin know to travel to 1205 AD? Does he, say, he says that PRISM is his way of detecting where the nullifier components are. How did PRISM convey the information that, that the first one is in 1205 AD? I'd like to know that. And PRISM is strong enough to push Azabeth down? Really? And there's somebody riding the dinosaur and we find out later that it's Prince or whatever his uh, uh, he, he's the Baron of the land his name's Henry Lord Henry please how in the heck did he get get a chance to ride a dinosaur for Pete freaking sakes what how did they get the thing trained I don't, I'd like to know that okay Azabeth is in chains Josh and Irwin are tied up in ropes, and she indicates that if she had her weapons, that things would be different. How? How are you going to use those weapons to get yourself out of those chains? Really? And the villagers return to the scene to actually help out Josh, Azabeth, and Irwin. How did they get to the village and then go back from the village back to where Josh, Irwin, and Azabeth were in time to save them from the dinosaur. Very unrealistic. Oh, and the blacksmith just doesn't have any name. I'd like to know that. The dinosaur only gets hungry once a month? Really? And what book was Jennifer reading? And the guards did not see Azabeth trying to escape. Really? Okay. Well, that was Josh Kirby, Planet of the Dino Knights. If you have any answer to any of these questions, go ahead and leave them down here in the comments below. And in the meantime, there will be another video popping up really, really soon. And one of those videos will be Josh Kirby, Time Warrior, my review of the human pets. So I want you to stay tuned.